Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Matt from Team Pancakes coming at you today with a deck profile for Buzzwall Lycanroc. Now this deck has seen a lot of play recently in uh, a lot of the recent regionals and tournaments, especially in the area where we live uh, around Central Florida, Orlando, Tampa area. And this deck is just insanely good and for lots of reasons of uh, which we'll cover. But anyone that's been playing even uh, non-competitively or competitively in the TCG as of recent has understood that this deck right now is the deck pretty much to beat in the meta and is reasonably uh, teched against with every other deck in the format right now. People are teching in cards into their decks for this deck for the matchup because, gosh, it, it needs it. And this has been uh, kind of a pet deck of mine that I've been playing before it became super popular. Um, I kind of took up Buzzwall and um, started playing and actually took it to an ARG last year. Uh, first big tournament I ever went to. Got second place with it. I've been playing it ever since, making small minor adjustments here and there. And it's just a really good solid deck. So we'll take a quick look at the profile, uh, kind of go over the reason why you know I choose certain cards over certain things. And um, after that, we'll try a few matches and see how it does. And uh, we'll go from there again. If you... Uh, like the videos that we've been posting or you have any other comments or suggestions please uh, you know hit the like button give us a uh, you know comment tell us how we're doing what kind of content you want to see us talk about and go through or any possible deck text you want to see us doing we'd be more than happy to get back with y'all on that so with that being said let's hop into the deck here so as you can see this is gonna be our main attacker it's gonna be Buzzwall uh, it's an Ultra Beast, 190 hit points, fighting type basic, and this is really um, one of the, probably one of the best cards um, that's been printed in a while, especially one of the better GXs um, out of the Pokemon that have come out since the base Sun and Moon set. Buzzball GX, 190 hit points, Jet Punch. Does 30 to the active, 30 to the bench, so we're already starting to spread damage early on on turn one if we're going second, which is just unbelievably powerful in a game where it's all about you know, getting as much damage on the field as you can. The Jet Punch is amazing. Um, knuckle Impact for three fighting, doing 160. Pretty good. Uh, big number for only three energy cost attack. And then, as you can see, he has Absorption GX, 40 damage times the amount of price cards that you have remaining. So, early on in the game, our early Absorption uh, can take a one-hit knockout on pretty much anything in the format. Late game, Absorption GX is not... Uh, too good of an attack with Knuckle Impact and Jet Punch are still, still two really good solid attacks. And like most cards in this deck, they're either going to be weak to Psychic or Grass. So those are the two types we have to watch out for. And Buzzwell being mainly a Fighting type is weak to Psychic. Retreat cost of two, nothing too crazy there. But Buzzwell is going to be one of our main attackers of the deck. And basically the MVP of kind of the standard format right now and why he's teched against in so many other decks. So that's Buzzwell there. I run one Regirock. I have ran two before, and um, just for the extra damage, but he definitely becomes a liability, especially in the Galissapod matchup, just because he is weak to grass, and um, the first impression can't get a one-hit knockout on him, and it's an easy two prizes. And there's going to be some more uh, support cards coming out in the next set in Forbidden Light with like Diancy Prism Star and stuff like that. So I'm going to find a way to work that into the deck. But for right now, one Regirock uh, works for me. So I like him. Uh, let's see. We play two Rock Ruff. Uh, specifically um, run the corner Rock Ruff. Uh, 60 hit points is basic. Has the wild kick. Nothing spectacular here. But the main reason we're running him is to run with the Lycan Rock. This is our other big GX card that has a really good GX attack that can help swing things in our favor. Um, he has 200 hit points, he's a stage 1, uh, pretty much has a Lysander ability, which is whenever you evolve him onto a Rock Ruff from your hand, you basically get to take one of your opponent's Pokemon to the bench and bring it up in the active. Very good for when your opponent's trying to slow set up something on the back row, and if you're able to accelerate energy and play your Lycan Rock and get it up in the active spot to either get it stuck or to KO it before they can get set up, really powerful card. Uh, Claw Slash, two colorless and a fighting for 110. Dangerous Rogue, a fighting and a colorless is 50 damage times the amount of Pokemon on your opponent's bench. Most decks now are running full bench. Uh, you know, most people are, you know, turn one, putting down a Lele for a Bridget to go get three basics out. There's four Pokemon on the bench right there, so that's going to be 200 damage, which, you know, with a choice band and a strong energy is going to knock out most stuff 
uh, in the format currently um, without even, you know, breaking a sweat. So really good GX attack, really good card, can be a potential fighter in the late game, and uh, just really good for the deck overall. Next we have a Watch and Learn Pseudo Wudo. Um, 90 hit points, basic. This is one of our non-GX attackers. Watch and Learn is just really, really good, especially against decks like Zoroark or, you know, a lot of decks that have these dark types that are weak to fighting. Or if you're playing against a Gardevoir that's going to infinite force you, you can infinite force it back. Or for a Ho-Oh deck that's going to Phoenix burn you, you know, for 180, then you can 180 them back. Watch and Learn is just a really good ability, and it's always nice to have a pseudo Wudo on your bench with an energy on it ready to go so that if you do, if one of your main Pokemon does get knocked out, you can just put pseudo Wudo back up in the active and you can take the knockout there with the energy attachment. So it's just a really good card, really good backup attacker, and you can take knockouts out of nowhere, so I like them a lot. Next we run two Mew. This can also be used for um, the Buzzwall matchup, like if you're going up against the Mirror or if you're going up against uh, Lucario. Mew is a Psychic, so it does hit for weakness, which is very important. And it can also copy Jet Punch and uh, other attacks of your basic Pokemon that you have in place. So Mew is just a really good all-around card for the deck, and he has free retreat. So being able to Guzma into Mew and then retreat into what you actually want to fight with is really good. And I run two copies of him. Just because I was running one copy and found that there were times where I really needed him or wanted another copy of him. And I couldn't get another copy of him back or he was prized. So I went ahead and I've been running two copies and I've really um, enjoyed having two copies in the deck. I run one Lele for the Wonder Tag ability because one is really all we need in this deck. And plus our uh, spots for cards is kind of tight as is. And then I run two Remoraid and two artillery for the draw support. It's really nice to have that Abyssal Hand ability to draw cards when our hand gets low. So that's gonna do it up for the Pokemon there. For items, we run Max Elixirs, we run four, because we wanna try to charge a Buzzwell as fast as we can, or whatever Pokemon are on a bench, we wanna get them charged up, because if we can get our Pokemon with energy charged up very quickly, it's very hard for this deck to lose. So that's why we run four Max Elixirs in the deck, because we need to accelerate that energy. We run four Ultra Ball, Three Brooklet Hill because every Pokemon in this deck, except for Lele and Mew, are fighting or uh, water type. So with Brooklet Hill, we can pretty much just get one free Pokemon onto our bench every turn, which is really good and really broken most of the time. So that's why we run three Brooklets. We only run one Cynthia, four Guzma because we need to be able to get our Pokemon like, uh, let's say, Buzzwell, you Knuckle Impact. Knuckle Impact's a great attack, but then it says... You know, you can't uh, you can't attack during the next turn. Well, that kind of leaves you in a pickle. And instead of putting a float stone on the buzzwall and trying to get it out of the active, why not Guzma something up on the bench and then retreat, and then now your buzzwall can attack again. So we run four Guzmas. Max Guzma is such a good card. Has been since it came out. We run three in, so we can disrupt our opponent's deck. And four Sycamore, so we can get through our deck much faster uh, sometimes you'll find that you'll have more Pokemon in your hand than what you need because it's actually very easy to get a full bench sometimes. And uh, you don't really need to, um, you know, have that full bench so uh, or have those extra Pokemon in hand. So that's what Sycamore is there for. Uh, we run four Choice Band because we need to do max amount of damage. And Field Blower is very prevalent in the meta right now, so we definitely need Choice Band. We run three Float Stone for the free retreat. Four strong energy. Now this makes it to where a fighting type Pokemon can do 20 more damage, which is so important because sometimes that's all it takes to uh, be to mean the difference between a one-hit knockout and a two-hit knockout. So we run four strong energy and ten basics. I used to only run nine. I made some changes with the deck over the past few weeks through testing, and I found that ten just makes it to where I don't feel as bad for discarding energy early because we don't really have a way to get it back. And 10 energy makes it also highly more likely that we'll hit our max elixirs, which is really important. So 10 basic energy is what we run there. So we're just going to go ahead and save it. And we're going to go ahead and hop over to the ladder and see if we can pick up some wins and see uh, what everybody else is playing this afternoon. Okay, there we go. It's our buzz bowl. Play and we'll get our first match here underway in just a second. 
I hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Um, we will be trying to put out more content, more videos. Just been real uh, busy as of late, um, but I do enjoy doing these videos. We'll continue to do them. And like I said, if you guys have any comments or suggestions, please leave them under the video below, and that would be awesome. Awesome. So it looks like we have multiple types here. I saw fairy. I saw fighting. So we won the flip. We'll go first. Yep. We'll see what we're playing against. Okay. Well, that's not a horrible starting hand. So we got Buzzwool. Probably going to go ahead and Ultra Ball into some stuff. Brooklet Hill for a Pokemon. Max Elixir. And then probably either Cynthia or N. Um... Let's see, right now, looking more like we'll probably play Cynthia. Okay, so this is Gardevoir. So, uh, probably going to be best to try to get our buzz walls up as quick as possible to knock these out. Because later on, um, let's see, let's get rid of the Brooklet. And let's get rid of the N. And... Okay, go ahead and get a rock rough because that can actually really help us Oko a Gardevoir if need be. Put that down. Max Elixir. Energy. Put that on the rock rough. We'll play Cynthia. Looking for energy here to put on the active. There we go. So we have that. We'll actually keep the Mew in hand. We'll attach there and we'll pass. So next turn, we'll probably Ultra Ball away the Mew and whatever else we draw for an Octillery. We'll Choice Band the Buzz Wool, draw cards with the Abyssal Hand, and then in our hand, in our hand away and see what happens. So Let's see what our opponent decides to do on our first turn. I'd like to get a knockout on one of the Ralts. Okay, there's the Rimmering. Choice Band. Parallel City, okay. Not too thrilled I got rid of that other Brooklet Hill now, but oh well. Okay, so let's go ahead and Ultra Ball. Weigh these two. Grab the artillery here. Okay, put that there. Alright, Choice Band, then we'll go ahead and Abyssal Hand for four. Two, three, four. Um... Let's see. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna attach the float stone. I'm gonna attach here. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this. Um because he's gonna need draw support, and I want to try to take out that and remorate as quickly as possible. Okay, this is pretty good. So we got Brooklet Hill down. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that there. And then we'll go ahead and get out Red Rocks. So we can do some more damage. And then we'll go ahead and Jet Punch. I would have liked to have gotten a strong energy there, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and take it for now. So we'll see what my opponent got off the end. Okay, so they got the rare candy. It's unfortunate, but okay. I understand. Now Ultra Ball, getting rid of the Guzman Lele, okay, they're going to get the Octillery, that's fine. Secret Spring and Energy on, that's fine. Probably going to Abyssal Hand, okay, so he's going to stick him more first, that's fine. <clears throat> okay, Curlia. Eevee, okay, so this is the Sylveon version. Okay, so you feel blower, so we have no more brooklets, but that's okay. Abyssal hand. Okay, so what I think we're going to do here, 5, 10, 15, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to put an, ener two ener an energy on our buzz while we're retreating to the Lycan Rock and Dangerous Rogue for the knockout. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll put an energy there. And then um, we'll go ahead and actually just retreat to here. 
And then we'll put a float stone on the ridge rock. We'll put down the Lele. Yes. We'll go ahead and Cynthia because we don't want to give... Well, we don't have a Cynthia. Alright, well, let's just go ahead and end then. We played our one of Cynthia already. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and end. Okay. That's pretty good. So let's go ahead and see. One, two... Three, four basics already, so we'll go ahead and try to max elixir. Energy, good. Put that on the buzz wall. We'll max elixir again. Nothing, okay. Go ahead and ultra ball away these two. Just to thin out our deck a little bit. We won't find anything there. Float stone. And we'll go ahead and abyssal hand. For five. All right, and then we'll go ahead and Dangerous Rogue for the knockout. So that's one Gardevoir down. So that's good. I did hate to lose that energy on our Buzz Bowl, but we just had to do that. So he probably has the cards in hand. He needs to get up another Gardevoir, I'm sure. Yep, there it is. It's another Curlia. There's a Sylveon. Okay. So, not in the best position, but not horrible either. Okay. And he'll end. Okay, that's fine. Our hand was kind of energy flooded anyway. <laughs> so, end is fine. Yep. Okay. Infinite Force, that's fine. Um, thinking about possibly trying to get that Sylveon stuck in the active spot, maybe. So, let's see. We'll go here. We'll go ahead and Guzma up that. And we'll Jet Punch. We'll put damage on the other Gardevoir. Okay, and we'll go ahead and Abyssal Hand real quick. I should have done that before I retreated, but that's okay. Okay, it wouldn't have mattered. So we'll go ahead and do Jet Punch. We'll put that damage on the Gardevoir. And let's see how many of our ends have we played. Three. Okay, so we played all of our ends. There's Gallade. Okay. So now he's going to be able to Premonition and Abyssal Hand, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. You just kind of want to get him stuck right now because if we don't get him stuck okay there's a the max potion okay on the octillery okay secret spring premonition so this is kind of essentially what a Gardevoir deck wants to do. It wants to get multiple, you know, Gardevoirs and Glades up, and it wants to have the artillery so that they're able to Abyssal Hand. Probably should have taken that out earlier, but I just really wanted to get a, a head start on that first Gardevoir. So, so far my opponents had a pretty um, fluid setup with Gardevoir. And the deck's still hard to beat. I'm not really seeing as much play right now, but the deck is still really good, as you can tell. So... Wait to see what he does here. It's already Secret Spring for the turn. He's Premonition, Abyssal Handed. He still has an energy attachment for the turn. Okay, there's an the energy. So he's probably going to Magical Ribbon. I have to reshuffle some stuff back in here. Okay. Wish I had another end to disrupt his hand, but I don't. That's okay. Let's see here. What do we get? Um, let's see. 160, 70, 80, 90, 100. If we find another strong energy, we can actually take a knockout on the Guard of War. 
which would be really huge. Um, so let's go ahead and dwindle our hand size down a little bit. So we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of an energy. Okay, for nothing. Then we'll go ahead and abyssal hand, see if we can get something. No. <laughs> that stinks. Okay, well, that was worth a shot, I guess. Um, so if we knock that out, take another two prizes. Let's see. could try to get the artillery stuck, but more than likely he has plenty of stuff to get it out of the active. Um, tell you what I think we do. I think we put an energy on the Lycan Rock, Guzma up the artillery, take out the artillery, lose the Lycan Rock, and then try to get a strong energy on our Buzzwall for the following turn. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that play. Because if we take away this artillery, it's going to take apart his main draw engine of the deck. So let's just go ahead and do this here. Forcing him to take the knockout on our Lycan Rock. And we'll dig a little deeper. There's a Max Elixir, okay. Probably not going to hit it though because we've already gone through a majority of our energy. Still have three strong energies somewhere between our prizes and our uh, deck. So hopefully we'll, we can find it. Okay, he's going to bring up the Galay. That's actually a smart move. So you can actually knock it out with the uh, sensitive blade. So an ultra ball. And we have two Guzmas left. So Let's see what we can get off the top. Okay, there's another Ralt. Okay, so he's going to retreat. Infinite force for knockout. Okay. Go ahead and bring up the artillery here. We draw into another basic energy. That is not what I wanted to see. So we'll go ahead and max elixir. Of course, we don't find anything. So you have one, two, three nine so we'd only have one basic energy left but we really need to take a knockout on this 60 how many choice bands have we played so far we haven't played any choice bands so unless we just get super unlucky we have to get a choice band attach it to the buzz wall 60 70 80 60 70 80 90 yeah that should be enough let's go ahead and attach here Let's abyssal hand first. It's probably going to be a bad idea. Yep, that was a bad idea. Well, no, because we'll just do this here. Take that. Retreat. Bring that up. And we'll... We're actually going to go ahead and Sycamore, because I don't think there's any way he can knock out our Buzzwell. We need a Guzma for next turn. There they are. Okay. And we'll... See, so play the Mew. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play the Mew. And then we'll go ahead and Knuckle Impact for Knockout. Taking us down to one prize card. A Sycamore and a Pseudowoodo. Okay. <clears throat> so he's probably going to try to end our hand down to one, possibly. We still have two Guzmas left. I don't think he can take a one hit knockout. Okay, that's fine. I only need one prize card, so. Premonition, let's see what's put two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Okay, that's fine. We don't really care about that. 
I was looking at Plea GX because it's been so long. Alright, so he's going to Premonition. Sensitive Blade. And that's going to be game because from there we've got the Guzma. Yep, so he knew it. So there you go. There's Buzzwell Lycanroc beating Gardevoir, which was one of the best decks in the format. So it just goes to show you, you know, even when Gardevoir gets off to a decent start, you can, you can win that matchup. So, all right. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and click done here, and we'll go ahead and go on to game two with Buzzrock. Let's see how the deck can... Oh, sweet. What is that, two cannon? Oh, man. That's such a good... I hope I get that. The car's broken as I'll get out. I'm being completely uh, facetious, by the way, for those of y'all that don't know. But Two Cannon is actually one of the Pokemon that was on my squad when I was playing Ultra Sun and Moon. So, okay, so we have Steel Psychic. So I'm thinking um, probably some type of Dust Magna Necrozma build, maybe with Garbodor. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Not liking the fact that all my stuff can pretty much get one-shotted. <laughs> so... Again, we will see how this matchup plays out. Okay, not the best start, I will be honest. Don't like that much. So this might be a little bit more of a rougher game, but we'll see. Oh, look, another Lele start. So we both start off with Tapu Lele. But he does have the Bridget in hand, so it doesn't matter for him. <laughs> so... Two Cosmogs. Okay, so this is actually Solgaleo GX. Wow. This is going to be really... Oh, sorry about that. This is actually going to be a really rough matchup if he can get those off. <clears throat> Man. Solgaleo with the Ultra Road ability and Sunsteel Strike is really hard to get over, especially if they get the... Um, the Soul Burst GX off and everything. It's a really rough deck to come back. Okay, so there's a Buzzwall. Put that there. That there. I don't want to... Let's see. Do we want to get rid of the Choice Band? Um, yeah, we need to go ahead and Sycamore. Get just a brand new hand. I think. At this, this point. Uh, we're not going to be weak to anything that we have. Unless... They are weak to Psychic. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and put a Mew. I mean, I doubt we're actually going to be using it, but you never know. And we'll go ahead and Sycamore here. Okay, it's Rock Rough. There's a Float Stone. Going to go ahead and to the Mew, I guess. And attach a basic energy there. And then we're going to go ahead and Gent Punch that for 30. And then 30 to the Cosmog that has the energy. And then we'll be done. Let's see how bonkers my opponent can go off on their next turn. Okay, there's an Eva Soda. Let's go get a Cosmoem. Okay, um. In. Okay. Well, I have liked, kind of liked what was in our hand, but let's see what we get off the end here. Mm. Nothing too crazy. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get a Remoraid. Let's go ahead and get a Pseudo Wudo. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can hit with this Elixir. We do actually hit with the Elixir. Let's go ahead and get it on the Pseudo Wudo. And then we'll go ahead and get this here. Go ahead and put up the Brooklet. And then Sycamore. And draw seven. Okay. Um, I would really like to get rid of this Cosmoem. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and bloodthirsty eyes of the Cosmoem to hit it for weakness. See, 30, 60. That would do it. So let's just go ahead and bloodthirsty eyes that up. Yes. Okay, going here. And then let's go ahead and jet punch that and the other Cosmoem. Try to set our opponent back just a little bit. Take a prize card. Ultra Ball. Okay. Don't really need it now, but... 
So I'm guessing they probably have the metal energy and the Sogaleo. Yep, there's the Sogaleo. There's the end. That's fine. Looks like they're digging for more cards. So. Okay. Not a great hand. Again, this is why I said we have Sycamore in our hand for when we have real Pokemon heavy hands like this. Because we just can't do anything with it, you know. Let's see. How many um, Max Elixir? We only played one Max Elixir. It'd be really cool. Let's see. If we could get a Buzzwell Absorption attack this turn. Really take our opponent by surprise. Okay. See what we draw. We draw an energy. Uh, let's see. Mm. We'll go ahead and attach here. And we'll go ahead and Sycamore. Get rid of all that bulky stuff in our hand. Ah, we really needed... Really needed a... Uh, Max Elixir right there would have been nice. Alright, um... Let's see. So let's go ahead and Ultra Ball away. Get rid of that. And this other energy. We'll grab an Octillery. Maybe we can still dig for it. So go there with this. Choice being here. Abyssal Hands for two. Nothing. Alright. Then we'll go ahead, Jet Punch that, and we'll go ahead and get a knock-in on the Sogaleo there. Uh, so now if our opponent does knock out the Mew, we have the return knockout with the pseudo Wudo. Oh, never mind. Wow, that was a really smart move by our opponent. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the Mew. And we're going to Brooklet first for Buzzwell. And then we're going to attach here. We're going to Max Elixir. Perfect. Onto our other Buzzwell. And we're going to put a float stone on the that uh, Octillery. Then we're going to Guzma. Up this dude. And we'll Abyssal Hand for three. If he's going to give us his Sogaleo, then so be it. You know, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, Keep the choice band in hand for right now. Well, he'll probably end us. Let's go ahead and put the choice band here. And uh, probably just go ahead and absorption. Since we're not going to probably use uh, Lycan Rock anyway. And we'll knock out the Sogaleo. It's the main threat on the board anyway. So Ultra Ball and Remoraid. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have two basic energies left and two max elixirs. So we can possibly get up another. <clears throat> okay, he's going to end us down. I don't blame him. We still have artillery though, so we should be okay. Yeah, this hand's fine. It's going to feel blower away. Probably the. One of the float stones and a choice band, possibly. Okay, that's fine. Double choice band. Mount Coronet, that's also fine. Okay. Probably going to suit up this uh, Tapu Lele, I would assume, with Radiant Star. Oh, no, he's going to Chrono Impact. That is fine. 160, and then he's probably going to try to um, get us with the return knockout with the Lele. Just go ahead and put this here. 
Then we'll best of hands just go ahead and knock out the Solgaleo so he really has nothing left here. Okay, two energy, that's fine. We'll go ahead and knuckle impact. And then we only need to knock out the Lele, and then we're good to go. Another energy. Yeah, so sometimes you get flooded with energy in your hand for whatever reason with this deck, but it's really okay because we really want energy anyway. So now if he knocks out this Buzzball, and we have Guzma in hand. So, I mean, as of right now, unless he really disrupts us. Okay. Cynthia, that's fine. <clears throat> Cosmog. Nest Ball. So really definitely going after those first Cosmog and Cosmoems really messed him up. So that's going to be good game right there. So again, you have to d really disrupt Solgaleo GX to, you know, turn off its ability to, you know, be able to do certain things. So we'll just say well played right there. And, uh, all right, get off the screen, please, so I can play. All right, there we go. And then that's Knuckle Impact for game. And that is the Solgaleo GX matchup there with the Solgaleo Prism. So there we go. There's game number two. We'll do one more game and uh, see how that goes. And then we'll just, uh, I think the main reason my opponent that last game lost that is he should have knocked out the Buzzwell when he had the chance instead of trying to get cute with the uh, Corona impact. That's just me. Maybe he saw something in his strategy based on what was in his hand and maybe he thought that was the better move. I don't know. So that's fine. We'll go to game number three. As y'all can see, Buzzwell like in Rock is, you know, a very good deck. It does have some glaring weaknesses, especially the Psychic. But uh, we're going to game number three. So, so far, with the Fire and the Psychic, I'm guessing this is maybe Ho-Oh Turtonator with Dawnwing uh, Necrozma uh, for the resetting of the uh, Phoenix Burn attack for Ho-Oh. So we'll see exactly what we're up against here. Oh, nothing in my hand. Had to mulligan. That's all right. I'd rather mulligan than have a Lele start like last game. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and mulligan. Although we both had Lele starts last game, so can't be too upset. All right, we'll work with this hand. That's fine. Get good old Buzzwall up there. I'm active. And opponent's going to draw a card. Okay, so we'll take the Reg Rock. We'll go ahead and Ultra Ball the... Let's see what we want to do. Oh, well, I guess Octillery and Floatstone, even though I don't want to do that necessarily. We'll go get a Rock Rough. And we'll put that down, and then we'll Max Elixir. Get that energy there on the Rock Rough. Put an energy on Buzzwole. And I can't, I just lit out looked. We're playing against Lickitung. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Good lord, that's. Horrible three energies back to back. So, all right, well, uh, go get Brooklet. Do we have any artilleries left? We do. Okay, let's go ahead and go get a Remoraid. And that is all we can do, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. We are up against Lickitung. So cute. So adorable. <sighs> Very long tongue. So, oh, well, thank you, opponent. <laughs> Thank you for the end. <laughs> Whew, that was long overdue based on our hand. Thank goodness. Oh, man. Where's the strong energy, people? Give me a strong energy so I can take some knockouts on these licky licks. These licky tongues. <clears throat> I'm just going to Ultra Ball. Let's see what he goes to get. Necrozma. Okay. Well, that can be a concern if he ends up getting that maxed out because we are weak to Psychic. So that would royally stink if he ends up getting that. Uh, let's see, do we want to... Yeah, let's just go ahead and get another Buzzwole ready. Might be too early, but uh, you never know. So let's go ahead and get some damage on that Necrozma. Hmm. <clears throat> 
Okay, Lickitung. I'm guessing this is the Victini Lickitung. Yeah, there's a Sycamore, so he can paralyze us continuously, or he can do massive amounts of damage. There's Energy Lotto. Probably looking for a DC. There it is. Okay. Well, this game just got really interesting. Really, really interesting. There's the Victini. Okay, so he's kind of fully set up right now. Dangerous Lick. For 100, is he going to do it? Nope. And for 50, and paralyzed. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and... Ultra Ball. Away Rim Raid and a Brooklet. For Artillery. Artillery here. We really need a Guzma. Um, here would be great. Uh, go ahead and put that there. Put that there. Bissell Hand. Okay, so there's a Guzma. Go ahead and attach energy to Buzz Bowl there. Now what I'm thinking about doing is just go ahead and jet punching and getting rid of these Licky Tongues because this is actually the crux of the deck. So if I can, let's see, how do I want to do this? 30. I think I actually want to get the other Buzz Bowl in the active here and go ahead and jet punch and we'll knock out the other. Well, actually, no, it'll still have enough hit points. Never mind. I forgot about that. But now he's got to retreat this thing or he has to try to get enough energy on it. So we've kind of put him in a... Oh, never mind. <laughs> he saw my Guzma and returned with his own Guzma. That is kind of annoying. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's see how it is. It's going to Ultra Ball, probably for a Lele, for a supporter, I would assume. Oh, he had another Guzma in hand, too. That's crazy. Oh, Rangaroo. Okay, so he's going to instruct for some cards. This is such an intriguing matchup. Okay, he has no cards in his hands. He's going to draw three. What does he get off the instruct? <clears throat> Dangerous Lick for 50, 100, 150, 200. Wow, 200 damage. That is ridiculous <laughs> gosh this deck y'all is ridiculous i've seen it played before on a couple other people's channels but my goodness that was ridiculous i think what we do is we go get we put a strong energy on buzzwell lele for guzma guzma up the lickitung and knock out both lickitungs i honestly think that's what we do here so we'll put that there Go ahead and Wonder Tag for Guzma. The last Guzma in our deck, so, or at least, yeah, in our deck for now. How many have we played? One? Wow, so you have two Guzma prized. Okay. So we'll go ahead and Guzma up that. Put that there. We'll go ahead and attach here so we can draw an extra card with a Bissell Hand. <clears throat> okay, well. Interesting. So we'll go ahead and jet punch and knock out both these Lucky Tongues. Okay, Guzma. <laughs> Good. And an Energy, maybe? Nope, and a Sycamore. Wow. Our hand is stacked with supporters for days. Alright, so he sends out the Victini. He's going to Max Elixir. He's going to try to get this... Oh no. This could be very unfortunate. Please don't find a way to retreat. Please don't find a way to retreat. Oh, I forgot about invasion. I'm so stupid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you could just do that. Oh, God. Oh, man. Okay, well. 
what do we even do here? Um, uh, sure, we'll just do that. We'll attach there, attach here. No. Oh, and victory. <laughs> we were gonna knock it out and then he had no more Pokemon. So yeah, we were just gonna dangerous rogue and knock out his Dawn Wings. So I mean we still would have only had two prize cards, but sure. I mean I'll I'll take that as well. So there you go, guys. Um there's Buzzball Lycan Rock as you see. It can do well against Metadex and it can do well against non Metadex, like Lickitung. <laughs> so Watch out for Lickitung coming up to your next uh, main event, I guess. If you see someone playing Lickitung with some Victini action and uh, Dawn Wings Necrozma. So be on the lookout for that deck, evidently. Um, at least on the ladder. Uh, so yeah, as y'all can see, that's Buzzball Lycanroc. It has very good matchups. Again, like I said, across the board. And uh, just the deck is just really solid. And has a good solid matchups. And like I said, you know, the meta right now is very much uh, kind of teching for itself. Uh, especially if you look at Portland Regionals, the top two decks, especially the one Xander, uh, the one Xander Perro was playing. And I forget who his opponent was. They were playing carbon copies of the exact deck. And the deck was Espeon Garboder, which is basically like the kryptonite of Buzzwall like in rock in some sense. So... Some people are playing decks that weren't even part of the original meta just a few weeks ago just to tech in against this deck. And so that goes to show you how powerful and how good that this deck is. And this is the deck that I'll probably be maining for a while, especially with Forbidden Light coming out with so much more fighting support. It's going to be really fun, and the deck's going to get even better, and I can't wait to see the potential that it has down the road. So... I appreciate you guys tuning in again. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to our uh, channel, you know, Team Pancakes on YouTube. Check out our Facebook. And uh, if you have any, again, any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that for our group, please feel free to put them down either on our timeline or under, uh, under the comment section under this video. And uh, this is Matt from Team Pancakes. It's been a blast, and I will catch you all later.